And welcome to Stampscaping 101. I'm going to teach you a project that I did with both preschool and kindergarten age kids, but we also did it with adults and our make and takes at uh, various conventions throughout the years. And, uh, you know, we taught all, all age ranges, okay, and all levels of stamping uh, kind of experience. Okay, so on, what we have here is a piece of stamp board. It's now, now called Clayboard Art Tiles, okay, or something like that. Um, and it, it's kind of like scratch board, if you know what that is. It's, it has this soft clay surface on here that you can scratch back into after you've applied media to it. A lot of people associate scratch board with black coated scratch board that you can scratch back into and reveal white. But scratch board's really just um, a coated surface that you can apply media to. And you can just leave it that like that, but it does have the ability for you to go back in with various um, sc scratch knives or sandpaper, wire tools, all kinds of different um, uh, techniques, steel wool, and to go back in and scratch into it, okay? But a lot of people say, hey, you know, I, you know, I wish I can do what you do. It's, just, you know, just so hard. And I tell them, hey, you know, we taught, you know, various classes to um, kids throughout the years and people that have never stamped. I don't know. People don't believe me, <laughs> you know, which is kind of good. But I don't know. I think it prevents a lot of people from trying things out. I don't know. There's, there's a spirit of kind of I can't do, uh, it seems, these days. But, you know, uh, with kids simple for them to learn because they don't have these preconceived notions of, uh, I don't know, what they can and can't do. What, you give them a project, they assume that they're able to do it, and they, and they all can. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is this little art tile right here with this lakeside cove on it with some reeds in the foreground and some scratched out stars. But what I taught them to do was to get that transition of lighting in there going from light, medium, to dark on the outside like that, okay? Now I'm going to use, I think, if I can find one here still, I might have put all of my um, uh, stylus tools away. I, I think I did. Okay, I'm gonna use a paper towel here, okay? But I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to achieve this, okay? Like I said, the, the preschoolers did it, and no one, you know, touched their cards. And I was teaching them in groups of four for their, um, uh, one of their Christmas little gifts to their parents, okay? So um, we made these, and we made them into refrigerator magnets, all right? So here's the way I'm going to teach uh, this. I'm going to go through the exact way I taught the kids to do it, okay? So I'm going to be talking as if I'm talking to some preschoolers and whatnot. Okay, so I want you to grab your tiles, okay, and this is the surface that we're going to be adding our ink to, okay? So we're going to start adding our inks going from light to dark. So I want you to take your first ink pad, which is this light blue, this is a medium blue, and this is a darker blue, and we're going to just cover that entire tile, okay, or board, completely with this first ink like that, okay? All right, now for your second ink, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and I want you all to imagine that there is a dime. Everyone know what size a dime is or a penny? I want you to imagine that you put a penny or a dime right in the center of your board and I want you to ink around that penny or dime, like so, okay? So you're going to have this little light area in the center of your tile, okay? Like this, you can spin your tile around or you can go like this. My suggestion is to just keep spinning your tile like that and you can tap your ink down around the perimeter, which means the outside of your tile and then you'll get this right here, okay? All right, now what I want you to do is you want to move on to your next uh, darker color, which is this dark blue, okay? Now what I want you to do, 
is I want you to imagine that you have a quarter or a, maybe a silver dollar. Does everyone know what a silver dollar size is? It's a much bigger coin, okay? And I want you to imagine that is in your, uh, sitting right on your tile, and you're going to go right up to that part of your tile, okay? So it'll look like this right here. Okay, and we'll just keep adding it down like this and kind of keep going over it to kind of smooth out your taps a little bit. Okay, so we have that right there. All right. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our black ink pad now. And I want you all to ink up your lakeside cove here, okay? So flip it upside down and ink it all the way up, okay? See, so what you do is you tap down. Don't press too hard, but just tap it lightly like this and get ink all over the top of it, okay? All right. Everyone have that? Now what I want you to do, watch me right now, is I'm going to take this tile and put it right up on top of there. But when you touch down like that, don't move it around. Otherwise, you'll get a blurry uh, lake on your tile like that. Okay, so we're going to take that and we're going to put it down like that. Now hold it and I want you to press all over it. Okay, stand up if you need to. Okay, and I want you to hold it down for a little bit of time so that that ink, the black ink, transfers or goes onto your tile completely okay so you get a nice dark print of your lake okay now when you pull up your tile make sure you don't move it around on your rubber just i want you to pull it straight up maybe hold your stamp with one hand and then lift straight up with your other and then you have your lake right on your tile like that okay all right is everyone all set and what you're going to do is you're going to get some stars onto your tile. And everyone grab your scratch knife right here. Notice how it has that little scoop on it. It's like a little spoon. And what I want you to do is you want you to go straight down like this. Now don't press too hard, but just spin your tool around like this. And wherever you do that, you'll get a nice little star. All right, now what I like to do too, is I like to put some of those star reflections down in my water. Everyone know what a reflection is? It's like water acts like a mirror for the sky, okay? All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to add some grass right down here in the corners, okay? So I want you to take your black pad out again and then grab your reed stamp, okay? It's like grass but it's a little bit taller, okay? Now don't squish your um, reeds out too hard. Like, let me show you what not to do, okay? I'm pressing really hard like this, okay? What I wanna do is I just wanna press nice and gently like that and to get a nice, good impression, okay? So we'll go with one over here and one over here. And then if you wanna go with a couple more, you can do that. And then you get this, okay? All right, now what we'll do is we'll glue our tile down on our silver square. All right, now I used to have uh, photo squares on the back so they'd peel off that, but I don't know, I was out of photo squares. I guess I ran out when I bought my uh, crafter's tape. Okay, and then I want you to put this right in the center of your silver square if you can okay press it down nice and tight and then you have your little ornament like that okay now okay <laughs> that was the project right there uh, i haven't uh, i haven't taught kids in a while but what we did was um, after they put did that after they stuck their 
tile onto their silver piece like that. What we did was we, we gave them um, a little piece of magnetic um, sticker, you know, that sticker magnet that comes in a roll, and you roll it out, and it just sticks on the back right here. So we gave them like a couple pieces to put on the back here, so it's a magnet. And then they had their little magnet piece like that. And um, all the kids did it. And all the kids, you know, it came out looking like mine. Um, it really wasn't any different in terms of the finish quality. And uh, it was funny, because I'd volunteered my son's classes uh, throughout the years, and I remember... Um, kind of in middle school, um, you know, some of the, one or two of the kids that were in one of his classes, like in seventh grade, remembered doing this tile. And he remembered because it's, it's still up on his refrigerator, but um, he remembered that project from, um, he was in the kindergarten class that I taught. This and uh, maybe one, there was probably one other project. And I, I like to do these tile pieces because it was a little bit more permanent. And we can do things like um, ornaments and um, refrigerator magnets, something that would stick up and kind of last. So typically for like an ornament, we, we made magnets out of this one, but if you want to do like an ornament instead of going square, we would stamp out the um, Lakeside Cove or whatever other item um, kind of uh, at a, um, on a diamond kind of format like that. And then you take a crop -a dial and just punch it right through there, or you can punch it right through this, and then you can put a little ribbon on it, and they can hang it from their tree. And I think we might have put, uh, like, the year on the back or something like that. A helper and I um, did that. But we didn't touch the kids' tiles on any of these. I, I never, you know, the, unless someone was, uh, you know, struggling or something like that. The biggest thing was in getting them to make sure they got their impression, you know, down just right, you know, without... Um, squashing it or something like that but you know i was i always kind of make sure that i you know mentioned um the things not to do um or the things to watch out for and they, they all did uh, just fine and the biggest thing was um as far as using this it was just easy i was using wood matted stamps and it was just easy just to take the tile to stamp like that rather than going like this you know you know like a four or five year old's hands you know with the kindergartners they didn't really have a problem but you know, the preschoolers, you know, in that one year makes a pretty big difference. So it's just easy for them to just go like this and right down there. Anytime when you take something small, it's nice and dimensional. It's not on a piece of paper. Um, they were able to take that just down like that. And they were really careful, too. And um, yeah, it was fun times. But anyways, um, things like this, too. One of the things that um, is really fun. I don't think I did this in class because... Um, I didn't want them to get ink all over their fingers, but if you take, um, why is this little gnat flying around? It's attracted to uh, cre creativity or something like that. But see this right here? How you take, there is a gnat right on this tile. Maybe that's, maybe it used to be a stamper or something like that. I'll try to get it outside safely. Can you? There is that little mat right there. It is not f afraid of stamping at all. But you see, you can get these um, silver edges. Ah, let's see. There we go. See that silver edge on these tiles? And then one of the things, see how shiny this is? This has been sprayed um, with a Krylon. Um, probably UV or the triple thick spray. So it feels like a glazed fired tile. I don't remember if we've sprayed the kids um, pieces or not. We might have. We probably put their name on the back and you know, we went out and sprayed ourselves because I don't want them uh, breathing in you know, fumes or something like that. But we might have sprayed them, I think, um, and just gave it to them at the end of class. You know, you'd have their, put their name on the back and then uh, we took the uh, pieces out and sprayed them. But anyways, that is the preschool kind of kindergarten uh, make and take. But like I said, we used to do these uh, without the silver, you know, kind of backing on it like this in make and takes um, throughout the years. I know we did different projects. We did a little bit of larger one and we did um, scratching back into the surface. If you haven't seen this before, um, seen this right here. Let me try to zoom in here just to 
touch. And this is, I didn't do this with the kids uh, because I had to get through, you know, 28 kids at four at a time during one class period. But um, what you can do is you can just take this tool right here and see this right here. You know how I add in highlights with um, a paint pen? Well, on stamp board or scratch board, you can go back into these and add in these little highlights by scratching back into the surface so I'm removing the ink that I applied in a very there is that little gnat it's like a I don't know it needs to go for a walk or something it is right there okay so there you have it like that and see there's the uh, little highlights on our rocks like a effective that is. You can do a little, you know, I do my little eight point star instead of drawing it in with a paint pen. I scratch it back into the uh, surface. Let me show you how to do that one. Okay, so I start off with um, one little star like that. And then um, I'll go, just like I do with the paint pen, I'll scratch um, downwards on every stroke. Okay, so this and I'll go for the uh, horizontal um, hairs arms then I'll do the little intermediate ones in here okay and what I'm doing is I'm scratching back into the blues okay and revealing the white of the board And then we have that. Now, I didn't do that. That's a little bit, that's way too delicate for a, you know, four or five year old. But these stars, they loved adding those in there like that. They love that part. Adults like it too. But uh, look at that little gnat. It's crazy. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I should adopt it. It's my pet. But anyways, there's the project right there. It's quick and easy, as you can see. And... Completely appropriate for young kids. And like I said, it, it's a little bit different, you know. It's, it's, when you're doing stuff with kids, I just think having the three-dimensional aspect of it, something that they can hold on to, look at that guy, hold on to like this, and you can make a different project. You can put a pin backing on it, um, it's just, which is fun. But the magnets are really fun. Um, but these are also really nice embellishments. I got silver ink all over my fingers here. Um, yeah, those are really fun, too. And one of the things you can do, too, is you can do a... Oh, my gosh, what happened to my thumb? There's a silver ink everywhere on something. Okay, but um, you can do a paper scene like this, do it in black and white, and then you stamp this on that, but then you use that as an embellishment, so you can kind of see how that would fit right in, but you can do a whole scene but have these. Uh, they used to call it spotlighting, um back in the day, but usually it wasn't with um, kind of three-dimensional tiles like that. It was with another piece of paper, or they might do it, um, may, may put it on a pop-up dot or something like that, but having it kind of inherently um, raised like that on a nice stiff board, and these tiles and that uh, type of surface are meant to take just about any type of media you throw at it, um, except for something like... Um, pastels or dry chalks or something like that. You know, this surface is too smooth for that. Um, but it's porous and it's absorbent. So acrylics, oil paints, um, dye-based inks, pigment inks that we use. You can emboss on this, no problem. I don't know. I'll have to try some embossing on this sometime. Okay, so anyways, stamping with kids, stamping with adults, stamp board, <laughs> fun stuff. But look at this, you have all those things that I do in my scenes. It goes from dark to light to dark to light to dark, right? You have your range of tones like that. It's just on a much smaller format. And it's, I don't know, it's kind of a cute format, you know, um, on these little tiles like that. Some people used to do even inches. All right, I'm going on and on. Fun with stuff. I miss uh, stamping with kids. Uh, it was fun back in the day, but um, yeah. Uh, I miss those days. Okay, thanks for watching.